Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to show you every single plugin that comes with FL Studio and explain how they work with audio examples. Each edition of FL Studio comes with a different number of plugins, but one thing's for sure, that's that we don't tend to use all of them, or we probably don't know what all of them do. So I'm going to show you every synth, instrument, effect, drum machine, sampler, controller, all of them, with the hope being that it either shows you something that you didn't know you had, sparks some sort of creativity, or makes you want to research one of them in more detail. Check the description for a lot more information, but there's tons to get to, so let's jump right in. Let's start with a few really interesting tools. If you go to your main settings and you enable ImageLine Remote, then use your smartphone and download the ImageLine Remote app, then your phone all of a sudden becomes a controller for FL Studio where you can record, stop, start, change the tempo and access almost all the functions. Furthermore, right from your phone you have a piano roll. There's also a whole host of other controls including a mixer, a drum machine and whatnot, which might sound a bit silly unless you've ever tried recording yourself in a vocal booth or across the room. Just having something where you can hit record, stop, start from the other side of the room is really, really handy. Patcher is one of the plugins that makes FL Studio so special. It can be run as an effect on the mixer or as an instrument on the channel rack, and it allows you to stack up multiple effects or multiple different instruments in series or parallel processing chains. So for instance, you could have a low end of a bass and then apply a parametric EQ to it. You could have a top bass, you could have a synth pad all running in the same plugin all being affected in different ways. And this might sound crazy, but there's lots of people who want complex uh, routing chains, and there's not enough effects chains in the mixer to do this, or there's not enough routing capability. This gives you everything you need and more. And on the topic of more, there are fantastic presets in here. So there's just absolutely tons for like, you know, chorus, compressor, crusher, delay, you can just load it up and it's an already uh, pre-made delay plugin. Some of these extra presets are even made by one of my favorite plugin developers, Julian, and this effectively expands how many plugins there are in FL Studio by this many. I can't count them all here, but I'm not gonna go through every single one or this video will be like two hours long, okay? But there are just so many plugins in here to explore. If you're not using Patcher, you are seriously missing out on a lot of capability. The next essential tool is the Edison. This is a fantastic plugin for recording, sampling, affecting audio, loaded on any mixer insert and either record directly into it from a microphone or drag in a sample from your browser. It really is a stunning tool for manipulating and looping audio. Newtone lets you manually inspect and change the pitch of any audio file, whether that is vocals or instruments, and you can really get in and do very fine manual pitch correction. It's an excellent plugin. New Time, as the name suggests, helps you retime loops and samples, whether it's vocals, drum loops, bass loops. It just helps you lock everything into the grid or very subtly sort of elastically shift things around. I remember when I first used Direct Wave, FL Studio just came to life and so many more options became available. It's a very powerful sampler with all sorts of different options, but one of the best ways to get started is to go to your packs instrument folder and then see all the different sounds you have in here. I like the orchestral ones. You just right click, send to channel, and then just get playing. Let's try a Rhodes. There's plenty of nice instruments to get you started, and many other people have recorded and released instruments that you can load into this for free. Harmer is an incredibly detailed and feature-rich synthesizer, though the user interface is very difficult to get to grips with, especially when you're new to FL Studio. You can get virtually any sound imaginable out of this, but I believe the interface is just too complex for most beginner users. If you want to dig into it, you will be very, very happy with the results you can get, though. Which takes me right onto Harmless, its smaller baby brother, which is much more manageable, I think, if you're sort of beginner, intermediate, new to synthesis. What I would recommend with this synth is just start by pulling in this sort of pluck control. It's a bit like a cutoff. That sort of makes sounds a lot more bearable. And then from there, you can start exploring the other parts of the interface. Again, if you dive through the presets, you get a feel for all the different stuff this can do. It's very, very versatile synth. Transistor bass gives you the classic sound of a Roland 303, and you can trigger different grooves with a different MIDI note. So if you want that sort of classic groove feeling, 
That's the plugin to use. FL Keys gives you a decent sounding piano. However, I much prefer the sound of the Rhodes patch in the presets here. And while we're talking about sounds, I don't know any plugin that offers more sounds than Flex. If you're a beginner, new to FL Studio, maybe it's your first year, this is the go-to plugin for production-ready sounds, basses, synths, arpeggios, whatever you need, it's probably in here. And there's a fair amount of control over adjusting parameters as well. Really dive through here, there's so much in here, but it's not a synthesizer in the classic sense. You're just picking presets and then adjusting them a little bit, but a lot of them really do sound very good. If it's a simple synth you're looking for, it doesn't get much more simple than 3 times oscillator or 3x OSC here. Just basic wave shapes. If you layer on a lot of good effects and you tweak it, you can get extremely professional results out of this. Strips it all back to basic, simple stuff, and you can really learn what you're doing with synthesis. Getting a little more complicated than the last one, SimSynth gives you access to a whole lot of sort of analog sounding synths. There's just a little bit more to play with on the interface. There's loads of really nice presets. One thing I like about this synth is they don't overdo the presets. There's just quite a lot of usable classic presets in there and you don't have to go diving through for ages. This is a fun one. This synth excels at metallic and sort of breathy atmospheric sounds, which I think this patch shows off quite nicely. Loads of possibilities, but it sounds very different from a standard synthesizer. Autogun is based on Ogun, but it's just two dials and some buttons on the screen. So you've got a lot of similar sounds, but you've basically just got random sounds one after another. You can just enter a random preset number and see where it takes you. GMS has a whole lot of grit and personality, but to find sounds, uh, there's no typical preset browser. You actually have to look in here Go to the bank here and then you get all of your presets so you can open up like an analog bass. The FL Studio Mobile plugin lets you use FL Mobile inside FL20. You can also transfer projects from your phone to your computer as well, but I won't go into all the details here. Minisynth, I believe, is another synth in FL Studio Mobile, but I've almost never used it. I really don't like the interface, and I think there's uh, loads of replacements for it in FL Studio already. A synth that definitely doesn't have any other replacement is Morphine, an additive synthesizer. To me, this is a very confusing synthesizer in the sense that it takes quite a long time to get used to it and to really understand how to get the sounds that you want. But if you're willing to invest many hours into learning it, it will open up a whole new palette of sonic capability. Poison or Poison is a really thick sounding synth. But to try and truly understand this, I would go straight to the uh, programs. I would go to options and reset the program to blank. Just start from basics, maybe use the cutoff and start adjusting things until you really start to understand it because almost all of the presets are very, very complicated rhythms. And it might be quite difficult to actually understand what's going on if you're brand new to synthesis. Sakura, or Sakura, is a really, really nice synth for string sounds, so harps, cellos. It's also great for these sorts of breathy and textured pad sounds. So if those are the sorts of sounds you're after, Sakura or Sakura is probably a really good option. This one's a really rich and thick recreation of an analog synth. Just really nice and thick, really subby. The speech synthesizer synthesizes speech. Hello and welcome to the video. Yeah, I'm not going to be out of a job anytime soon. Citrus, or Citrus as some people call it, is probably one of the most useful synthesizers in FL Studio. It's incredibly powerful and unfortunately that makes it complicated, but the people that spend hours getting to learn this one, they just seem to be able to create any sound they want at a moment's notice like that. So this is definitely one to dive into and I should probably make some more tutorials for it. 
Toxic Biohazard is a monster of a synth with an absolutely horrid GUI. Like, I mean, it might look cool, but it's so uh, confusing trying to get used to it. The one thing I'd say is that every single sound that comes out of this has so much grit, so much edge and texture. It's not really the synth you'd want to use for just completely pure tones. Everything that comes out of this just sounds like it's something out of a cinematic soundscape or some ominous movie soundtrack. Really, really cool synthesizer, but the GUI is a little bit too intense for, <laughs> for my personality. Beepmap lets you make sounds out of pictures. You can simply drag a picture on, so I sound like this. I'm never going to use this plugin again. Boobase is a simple but quite mediocre bass guitar plugin. Similarly, FL Slayer is a pretty mediocre electric guitar plugin. Plucked makes sounds like this. But it has a really difficult time staying in tune. FPC is a drum machine similar to the Akai MPC format, but with a slightly different workflow. So you can program different pads, different velocity layers, and then play and record them directly on your MIDI keyboard or MIDI drum machine. Bass drum is for making bass drums, and you can tweak a lot of the parameters, really get them sounding the way you want. Drum pad is similar, it's all about synthesizing your own drum sounds. Drum axe is a drum synthesizer with a built-in step sequencer, which lets you fine tune and tweak all of these different drum samples using all these controls down here. It's a more classic groove programming method where you sort of build up a beat and tweak and tune everything perfectly as you go using the step sequencer and all of these controls down here. Fruit Kick is a kick drum synthesizer, but I'm not really a big fan of this one. DX10 is a classic FM synth. It's very versatile, but also has a simple interface, but it's especially good for sounds like bells and slightly metallic sounds. Drum Synth Live is a much more modern looking drum synthesizer, but it's still got a load of classic sounds in it, like your classic 808 sounds. Granulizer is a sample based plugin, so you can simply drag in a sample and play it back. But you can also highly modify it with granular synthesis. Fruity Slicer analyzes an audio file that you drag in, automatically slices it, and allows you to use these slices for further audio work. For instance, I can now use my keyboard to play the individual slices of this loop. SliceX takes this same concept, but makes it a hundred times more advanced. So this is the plugin you're really going to want to use for your sampling and slicing up of your beats. Wave Traveler lets you sort of warp the time of your loops and also apply some sort of scratching effects. Balance is an excellent mixing utility plugin. You can simply change the pan of a signal or decrease or increase the gain without having to do anything else on the mixer. Just gives you a larger readout of what's going on up there. Center is a great plugin to remove DC offset from your signal. If you don't know what that is, then you probably don't need to worry about it. But a lot of uh, hardware synthesizers and equipment generate some DC offset, and this just fixes that. DB meter is a large resizable DB meter that just simply gives you a readout of the peak loudness of the signal. But if that DB meter didn't let you see enough about the audio, Wave Candy surely will, so that you can see an oscilloscope, a spectrum, a DB meter, or a vector scope, which gives you information about the left-right spread of the audio. These are some note-taking plugins that you can load onto any mixer track and just type some notes out. There's Fruity Notebook, Notebook 2, which is just a cleaner, more modern version, and then a HTML notebook that's a little bit different. You can find out more about it just there. These are pretty handy for writing out mix notes, or potentially if you're bouncing stuff to audio, you might want to remember what effects you had on something. So you can just type it out so that you can replicate it in the future. Fruity LSD is one that I've never used, but it's a software synthesizer and it allows you to access the synthesizer on your sound card. I have to admit, I don't really know how it works. I've never used it and I don't think I ever will. Fruity Mute 2 lets you automate mutes because you can't do that straight from the mixer. Panomatic lets you adjust the pan and volume of a signal and it's fantastic for automating panning effects. And there's also a built-in LFO. So let's take a quick listen. To the left the right and then the inbuilt LFO you can't see it but you will hear it 
panning all over the place. Phase Inverter simply lets you swap the polarity of a channel. Pitcher applies automatic pitch correction to any signal you run through it. It's effectively auto-tune for FL Studio. Scratcher is a vinyl turntable simulator which allows you to record your performance in real time. Send is another fantastic mixing utility plugin. This allows you to send audio from one channel to another at any point in the effects chain, so it doesn't rely on the typical side chaining capabilities. You can just send audio from anywhere to anywhere else. Stereo Enhancer and Stereo Shaper are both plugins which help you dramatically change the stereo image and width of the signal you apply to it. Stereo Enhancer is probably a little bit easier to use, but the Mixer Matrix in the Stereo Shaper lets you do all sorts of really interesting things like flipping a channel or just removing just the right or left hand side. Certainly two very interesting plugins if you're into your stereo width and very spacious music. Grossbeat or Grossbeat, the most famous plugin in FL Studio by far. If you haven't used this, please check out my full video. It's a time and volume manipulation plugin. Simply put it on your mixer, run some audio through it, test out these patterns, and you'll see why everybody is excited about this plugin. Fruity Compressor is a compressor that uses only a tiny bit of CPU. It actually does sound really good. You can get great results with it, but the lack of a visual readout or gain reduction makes it quite intimidating for beginners. Whereas the Fruity Limiter plugin is both a limiter and a compressor, so it can deal with pretty much all of your dynamic needs, and it has a fantastic visual readout if you need that reassurance that everything's doing exactly what you think it is. This is also a great plugin for sidechaining. Fruity Multiband Compressor is exactly what you think it is. It breaks up the frequency spectrum into three bands, low, mid, and high, and you can compress them separately. It also has a linear phase mode, which makes it extremely precise, but I do find some of the settings are a little bit fiddly with this one. You have to really know what you're doing to get great results out of it. Soft Clipper is a soft limiter plugin which has a gentle knee compression setting. It's designed to avoid clipping and bring a little bit of warmth and saturation to the signal. But the true dynamics champion in FL Studio is Maximus. Use this for all of your mastering needs. It splits the frequency spectrum into low, mid and high. You can apply stereo widening, saturation, limiting, compression. It's highly customizable and I'd recommend using it on your master bus. Which takes us right on to the legendary Sound Goodizer which packages up some of Maximus's incredible processing and just turns it into four easy to use presets and an amount dial. This just dials in some really nice compression and saturation on your audio. Transient Processor is one of my favorite plugins. It's a really quick way to dial in the dynamics in a track or an individual instrument. So listen quickly to how you can change the attack and punch of a whole mix just by dialing in a little bit of the attack here takes away all the kicks and snares, or really accentuates them. Dialing in a little bit of this on each track can often be a lot quicker than using a compressor, much easier for a beginner as well. Transient processing is very underutilized, but I really, really love dynamics in my music, so if you're obsessed with dynamics, definitely take a look at transient processing. I really would urge you to check out this plugin, EQUO. It's a graphic equalizer. Not only does it function as an EQ, but you can also pan certain parts of the frequency spectrum to the right or to the left. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll simply scoop out some of the lows and some of the highs just with the regular EQ. So that's sort of a regular EQ, but then if you go to the panning section, you can pan the top end to the right, bottom end to the left, that sounds really silly on this beat, but there's loads of audio sources where you might want to just, you know, subtly shift the low end of a guitar to the left speaker, the high end to the right, just to give it a little bit more realism. And it's already built into FL Studio right here in this graphic EQ. It really is a very cool plugin. Seven band EQ is a very low CPU usage equalizer. It just splits the frequencies into seven bands and you can simply boost or cut frequencies. Parametric EQ1 again has seven bands, but this gives you an awful lot more flexibility, lots more control over filter shapes and cue factors. But again, an extremely low CPU plugin, which finally takes us to Parametric EQ2, probably the most advanced equalizer in FL Studio. This one uses a bit more CPU, but it's still pretty friendly and it gives you a ton of control over filter shapes and it has a nice graphic interface. Fast LP is a very simple low pass plugin with two controls, one for filter and resonance. Sounds like this. Two 
two more filter plugins with a little bit more control. Free filter is really simple and the regular fruity filter is designed to be automated. Love filter is the most advanced filtering plugin in FL Studio. There's eight different filter stages. You can run them in series or parallel and there's a lot of control down here with the envelope. So if you want very advanced filtering or very creative effects, use this one. The Convolver is still what I consider to be the most underrated plugin in FL Studio. It is the most beautiful sounding reverb I've heard in FL, and it also has a linear phase equalizer built right into it. So please check out the full video I have for tons of audio examples, but if you're not using this plugin, I highly, highly urge you to go check it out. I decided to group these ones together. Fruity Reverb, Delay, Phaser, Chorus, and Flanger. They all do exactly what they say, they're great for spatial effects and some time-based effects, but specifically these are the most CPU-friendly versions of these effects in FL Studio. So if your computer is just crashing out on Reverb 2 and Delay 3, try going back to these ones. You might miss the interface, but it cuts it all back, and all you have to focus on is how good it actually sounds, and not necessarily what the plugin looks like. Reverb 2 is an absolutely classic reverb plugin. There's a ton of variation possible in this one. It's a classic. I don't need to say anymore. Delay 2 is a streamlined delay plugin. It's great for simple effects and also when you just want to get used to how delay works, but I would highly recommend moving quickly on to Fruity Delay 3, which lets you affect the delays a lot more, change the feedback, modulation, diffusion. Basically, you can add a ton of effects onto the delay without having to load up any more plugins. And in my experience, Fruity Delay automates very, very smoothly. I've never experienced any audio glitches or dropouts with this one, so I really trust it, and it's definitely my go-to delay in FL Studio. Fruity Delay Bank doesn't look as inviting as the other delay plugins, but it lets you stack up to eight separate delays on top of each other. You can pan them in different directions, create interesting feedback loops. I like using this on guitar when I want two or three different delays and I don't want to load up three different plugins or send it to lots of different mixer tracks. Fruity Flangus is a much more fun flanger plugin, so I'll just let you hear what it sounds like. And I know there's loads of sort of lo-fi, retro, vintage, chorus, flangey type plugins out there, but this one's actually, you know, it stands up with the rest of them. It's not so great for automating. I tend, I find it tends to sort of glitch out a little bit when uh, moving these around, but once you set it, it's perfect and it sounds great. I've decided to group all of these distortion plugins together. I just made a video about saturation and distortion if you want to check that out, but basically we have a bit reduction, a bit reducing distortion, an overdrive, another sort of overdrive and general purpose distorter, and then a wave shaper. All of them produce either totally different or just subtly different saturation and distortion on your tracks. So I'm talking bit reduction effects, some grit, some edge, some dirt, or even some warmth in your track, depending on what you're looking for. So these are the sorts of plugins you use to add a lot of texture and tone to your music and I hope you find them very, very useful. But if that's just not enough distortion for you, there is a fairly new plugin called Destructor, which layers up different effects, distortions, filters, choruses. You can select four different categories of effects, filter, chorus, distortion, and speaker. You can also move them around to change the order, and then within each effect, for instance, distortion, there's a whole list of different types of distortion, different types of filters, different types of chorus for instance. So this, again, just gives you access to a lot of different sounds all inside one plugin. Effector is a multi-effects plugin, which is great for either live performance or just experimenting with lots of different effects at once. So there's filters, phasers, reverb, distortion, all within this one plugin. To finish off the distortion section, this is the hardcore plugin, which is, I think, designed mainly for guitarists. You can see the layout looks like a guitar pedal board. This is a plugin that I had a ton of just stupid fun with when I first started with FL Studio. I would run everything through here, vocals, guitars, you name it. It was just a whole lot of fun experimenting and discovering all of these various effects. One thing I would say that's quite nice is it just simplifies each effect down to two or three dials, or in this case, four. And that's exactly what it's like with most guitar pedals. You only have a few different dials and you've really got to dial in your tone really, really well with just a couple of options there. Fruity Video Player lets you play video along with your project, which is something I've actually done once 
when making soundtrack for a music video. You can either lock playback so that it always plays in time with your playlist, which is great, or you can just play it free and just enjoy watching some video inside FL Studio. Fruity Dance just ensures that someone's always dancing to your music. It's just a little fun little animated character. Spectruman is a pretty dated Spectrum and Analyzer plugin, which just lets you visualize the audio in a different way. The Video Visualizer or Z Game Video Editor is designed to help you make cool looking graphics or music videos for your music. I, it's not something I actually use, it's not something I necessarily recommend using, um, but it could be cool, you could get some good results out of it, and it's probably a little bit of fun. This plugin is designed to control Razer Chroma hardware. If you have a keyboard, headset, mouse, etc. from Razer, you can control a lot of the colors and lights using this plugin. Rewired allows you to host any rewire compatible devices with FL Studio, and if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Got a few controller plugins to go through, so I'll try to make this quick. The first one is the keyboard controller. So this uses MIDI or piano roll data, which you can then assign to a parameter. So say you want to open up a filter, you could do it from your keyboard by pressing say a lower C, then a higher C might open that filter up a little bit more. So it's just a different way to control things in the software. Envelope controller takes this to the next level by applying an envelope to whichever key you want to press. So a different key could trigger a different envelope automation on a different parameter. Formula controller lets you create automation data based on a formula that you can type out here. XY controller lets you use your mouse to simultaneously control two different parameters very smoothly. XYZ controller can also control a third parameter, which is great if you've got a touch screen and it's even better if you're in a live performance situation and you want to modify a lot of parameters all at the same time. Fruity Voltage Controller is for sending out control voltage or CV to hardware synthesizers. Control Surface gives you a customizable interface where you can create different dials and faders and then you can actually use these and assign them to any other parameters. I quite like using this to simplify automation when I want to control say 10 or 15 parameters all to increase at the same time. I can just link them all to this and simply create one automation clip for this one dial. So that's all of them. I know that was an awful lot to get around in one video and that's probably an, a ton of information that's just gone into your head. So, you know, take it easy. Hopefully there was one or two of them there that inspired you or maybe you didn't know uh, what you already had at your fingertips with FL Studio. So anyway, take it easy. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week in the next video. Bye for now.